there are actually three calculations for us to consider here. First of all, there's still 2D analysis and design. And this is where we can model and analyze 2D frames or trusses and then design the various members. Although in this first version of the calculation, the design is currently restricted to horizontal members only. The second calculation is steel member analysis and design. And this is the calculation you're likely to use for design of beams, whether it be single span or continuous beams. And we'll go through this example in more detail further on in this presentation. And the third calculation you may be interested in is steel member design. So this is without the analysis. This is purely a cross-sectional check where you can design sections based on defined values for moment, shear, and axial force. This actually replaces the previous Eurocode steel member design check that you may already be using. But one significant enhancement here is the ability to check your section at multiple positions, simply by adding a additional design section and you can specify the revised forces at that particular position. So this means you can design your, your member at multiple different points, all within one single calculation and one set of output. So what we'll do now is we'll take a more detailed look at the steel member analysis and design calculation. As normal, the calculation notes provide all the information we need regarding the scope and assumptions. And in this case, as all three calculations are related, we've actually used the same set of notes for all three. A few highlights worth mentioning at the start are because we are integrating with the 2D analysis, we've effectively got no limit on the number of spans or the load configurations or the number of load cases or combinations. We're also going to be able to access our code specific load combination generator to make setting up our combinations much faster and more effective. And there's a couple of new features that will be useful are the ability to embed user notes within the calculation so we can add comments within the output. And we can have a lot more control of the actual output we're going to get. There's some options for selecting which output to include, and for that matter, which output to exclude. So let's move on and have a look at the calculation. And we'll start with an example of a single span simply supported beam. When we first run the calculation, we're presented with a 2D analysis view. And in this case, it's been simplified and cut down, ready for specifying steel beams. But all we need to do is add in our span and choose the section we want to design and the model will then be set up. We're using the 2D analysis interface here so if you're familiar with it then all those features are, are available to you but we also spent a fair bit of time enhancing the diagrams and the layouts to make things that much clearer and easier for you to use. For example when we take a look at load cases the diagrams are smarter the self weight is now a dedicated load case. We're provided with permanent and imposed load by default, although we can add additional load cases just by selecting from the drop list or typing in our own load case names in the, in the box provided. We're also set up here ready to go for UDLs, which is probably the most common load type. So it's very quick. All we need to do is specifying our loading. So we'll do a little bit of permanent load and also some imposed load. If you want to move on and add other load cases like point loads and VDLs and so on, all those features are available to us. We can also view the load cases individually by clicking on the load case title and the diagram will update. Or by clicking the space, we'll see a diagram for the entire load set case set up so you can check your configuration. If we look at load combinations, you could set these up manually, but we can now access this load combination generator which is set up to be code specific to the particular code we're working on. And then we can pick and choose the most relevant combinations from the code specific list. The calculation will recognize all the loads we've provided so far, set up the relevant combinations, whether they're strength or service combinations, and it will set up all the relevant load combination factors for us, which we can override if we wish to, or in this case, we'll just accept the defaults. The calculation can also handle pattern loading automatically as well and generate relevant combinations required for that. I would recommend that you're a bit more selective about the combinations rather than just accepting the defaults provided by the code. This will help you improve the sort of level of output that you need to provide, the amount of checking you need to do, 
and also increase the speed of the analysis and design later on. So in this case, we're just going to cut it down to a couple of combinations which we're going to treat as critical. The results haven't really changed. We can still see the uh, the detailed results by element, node, and member to check that our loading and our design results are all what we're expecting. Although the diagrams are a little bit tidier, a little bit sharper there as well. There's been a few changes in the output. First of all, we've now separated our tabular and sketch output, so it's much easier to specify which combinations of results you're looking for, just by simply checking the boxes. And we can also preview that output we're going to get. So we can check to see exactly what information can be provided. We can look at the nice, nicely scaled diagrams here. So assuming we're happy with the output we've got, we can now move on and look at the design of our steel beam. And what happens next is we're taken through to our, our main interface where we can review the model. In this case, it is still a single span simply supported beam. So not quite so critical here, but if you imagine you had a frame or a multi-span beam, we can now look at the detail for the whole, whole model that we've created. And then we can select which particular element we want to design. So I'm going to design the first span, which is currently set up as specified as undesigned. So we just click on design and it will take us through to the design specific in detail for that particular span. Currently we can see it's failing, it's not got sufficient uh, bending resistance. Let's look at some of the design options. This is where we can choose our national annex and some of the loading conditions and lateral torsional buckling effects and so on. If you're not sure what any of these relate to, you can simply click on the box that, and then review the detail in the notes above or the, oh, the tooltip that appears with the calculation. For this example, I'm going to leave everything as, as default. So at this point, I can see it's failing, so I could decide I could change the section. And if I do that, it will automatically update the, the analysis in the background. Uh, for now, let's just try a different steel grade. Let's increase the grade of the steel. That's helped a little, but we're still failing. Um, we can also add some restraints into the design. Currently, it's set up as top flange and bottom flange free, so an unrestrained beam. But I can put in my uh, either fully continuous top or for this example, let's try some intermediate restraints. We've got some new options in here. We could just add individual restraint positions. In the previous calculation, we were limited to three, but now we're kind of effectively unlimited, so we can specify individual restraints at whatever position we wish to have. We could also choose a number of regularly rest spaced restraints. So we can say we want five restraints, for example, and it will automatically work out our spacing for us. Or we can specify a, a spacing, let's say 1300 mil, and it will automatically work out how many it needs for us. So a much quicker and slicker way of adding, adding top and bottom restraints. If you want to see where those restraints are, just click on the details button here, and it will show us our beam with those restraint positions highlighted, top flange crosses here. And we can also obviously view the design forces on our, our beam as well. Another new feature in this calculation is the ability to embed your own customized notes in the output. So if you look at this little icon here, we can click on, in this case, adding a note for this particular span. And we can add a note which will then be embedded in our output. As with the analysis, we can preview our output. So we can see a summary of the design checks we're gonna see. And notice here, we've actually got our user, user note already added in. We can be selective about what sort of results we want. So we can have just a critical combination or all combinations or critical combination and, and critical location. So we can be specific about the level of detail we want included. We can also add more notes related to the individual checks themselves if we wish to. Let's add a note in for our, our section size. And we can also decide to exclude checks completely if we wish to. So say, for example, you didn't want a classification check in here. You can opt not to include it 
and will actually be completely omitted from the results. In the preview, we're seeing little flags telling us what's going on. Some of this will be tied up when we get to the results, and it'll be a nice, clean, tidy report. Okay, so now that we're happy with the design of this particular span, we can go back to our main interface and look at our entire model. As it happens, as I've mentioned a couple of times, we're only looking at a single span beam, so this will become more obvious when I show you an example with, with multiple spans. Back on the main interface here, you'll notice we've also got options to add notes for the analysis and edit those span notes that we've already put in. The other thing I've mentioned at the earlier, earlier on is the fact we've got new deflection criteria. What I can do now is I can specify different uh, deflection checks for each combination. So in this case, it's highlighted the fact that this is a service combination. The calculation knows to include a deflection check, and we have the deflection limits that we can override. So now it's updating the design results to show it's actually now failing our new deflection check. Let's leave that as failing for now and have a look at our results. So what we'll get now is our combined analysis results from the selection we made earlier on with all the diagrams and analysis results. And then we'll come on and look at our member design. And you can see here, here's some of the notes that we added, in, added included in, standard SOC section. And you'll notice the classification check has been removed. And as normal, we've got a nice, clear, and um, easy to follow, transparent output for the individual design checks that it's performing. So let's recalculate and take a look at adding an additional span just to show you a multi-span version. So to do this, I'm back at my main interface, which is showing the kind of state as my current overall model. If I click on analysis, this will take us back to the analysis view where we can add in, let's say, well, let's add in a one and a half meter cantilever. We'll fix the first support and make the cantilever end a free support. So we've now got a fixed end and a cantilever end. Straight away, my UDLs have been set up to cover the full span. I could now come and put in some additional loading if we wish to. My load combinations have been updated as of my results, and I can now look at my output and refine the detail if I wish to. Back at the main interface now, I can now choose which of these two spans I'm gonna design. Span one, the section that was previously failing, the design has been automatically updated with my new analysis results. So the deflection is now well clear and they've got a pass on that particular section. So it's automatically updated the, the design based on that new analysis. And I could also now look at span number two. So this is the cantilever span, currently showing as sort of pale blue, which means it's not been designed yet. Choose the design. That's carried through the same information as my previous span. I could add restraints, check anything I wish to in here, determine which output I want to include. Back at my main window, I can see that my entire model is now passing. If I have a quick look at the deflection criteria, now that we've added a cantilever in, we'll see here that it's actually recognized that and added in a cantilever check as well. So it's checking the deflection on the cantilever as well as the main span. So I'm happy with that design and I can click on finish and generate my output. For the custom section property side of things, we deal with that in the analysis view. We can still select our standard sections using the data list in the normal way, but we also can now amend those properties if we wish to. So I can go to the sections tab and actually just simply over type my key five properties here. Or if I want to make more specific changes, I can click on the new custom button and amend individual properties for this particular section. So for example, I could change the flange width or the depth of the section. It's not actually linked to a section properties designer yet, but I can customize any of the properties I wish and those changes will be carried through to the design. The key point here is when we get to the design, it will be treated as the same section type as I originally selected. So I selected the UK B section, which is a, an I section beam. So it's going to be treated as an I section, regardless of what custom properties I amend. So when I get to the design, it will use all the I section design rules. The other enhancement to the steel beam analysis and design is the ability to have multiple side-by-side -side sections. So if you move on to the design phase, 
you'll see we can choose up to five side-by-side -side sections. And by changing this, the calculator will automatically update the section properties to suit. It will update the analysis in the background and instantly update the design results for that particular beam. You can check if you want to by going back into the analysis and you'll see here that the reference is now updated to two times the UKB section that we started with. So it's got a, a double section as far as the analysis and the design is concerned.